The following interview was conducted with Ellsworth D. Christmas, Professor Emeritus of Agronomy for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Friday, December 4, 2009 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good afternoon, Professor Christmas. Thank you. Let's start off by telling us where you were born and your parents in early years. Okay, I was, I was born in Warwick County in southwestern Indiana. November 5, 1935, okay. and uh, my parents lived in a small house out in uh, the country, and at that time all births occurred at home, and so I was uh, uh, grew up uh, in uh, Warwick County. In Warwick County, right? Warwick. Warwick, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was grade school like, and tell us about grade school and high school. Well, grade school... Was small. Uh, uh, the first uh, couple of years, I attended a one-room school with the first eight grades in one room, and with one teacher. So it was very interesting. The the younger, smaller kids uh, sat closer to the potbelly stove, and the older kids uh, were farther away. They were also responsible for drawing the water from the well and carrying in the coal for the for the stove. And those are my memories of uh, those first years. Okay, that's interesting though. Yeah. Did you walk to school? Was it close to your yes. home? Yes. Well, it wasn't close. It was but at least two miles, okay. but there were no buses. No buses. We, we had to walk, yes. Okay. And you had lunch there as well, school? You took your lunch. Yeah. yeah, we had a little lunch pail that we carried. And <laughs> a lunch box. <so. laughs> okay, tell us about high school. What, uh, well, uh, I, I finished my grade school at, uh, at a different school, uh, and uh, that was a typical kind of a, a grade school. And then for high school, uh, I actually transferred from the school district we lived in to Boonville High School. Um, because it was a much, uh, my father felt a much better uh, school, that I would get a better education there. And they offered vocational agriculture, uh, where the local school did not. And so since they offered vocational agriculture, I was able to transfer with my local school district and paying the tuition for me to go to school at Boonville High School. So I graduated from Boonville High School. Okay. And then did college come next? After after high school, college came next? Yes. And how did you happen to select Purdue? Well, that's all I ever heard, you know. Would your, did your father was, go here? No, oh. no. I'm the first of my family. And, uh, Do you have any brothers or sisters? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the oldest of uh, eight. And uh, so uh, my, uh, as far as I know, in terms of the Christmas family, I'm the first um, to venture away to college. And of course, being in FFA and in 4-H, uh, that's, that's all we uh, heard was Purdue. Sure. Now, I grew up in IU country, as you might know, and so there was a lot of talk about Indiana University. Uh, but for me, uh, being in agriculture, agriculture education, and what have you, uh, well, Purdue was what I, what I heard. And in fact, my first trip up here to Purdue, it was my shop teacher, or, uh, who was really not my shop teacher, but uh, he was a homeroom um, teacher for my homeroom. And he was a Purdue graduate uh, and taught uh, shop. Uh, I didn't take shop from him, um, but uh, he took an interest in anyone that he thought might be interested in Purdue. And was between he and the BOAG teacher and the county extension agent uh, convinced me that uh, I should go to college and this is the place I should go. Right. Okay. Well, tell us a little about your days, your campus life, your professors, and of course the study and things. Well, I, I started out as an agricultural education uh, major. In fact, I, that's where I stayed for four years, uh, agricultural education. And... Uh, um, I moved directly into a fraternity. Uh, I did not live in a dorm, and uh, 
In fact, Would I that did, have been farmhouse? It have been farmhouse, yes. I did not know what a fraternity was, in fact, until someone arrived at my house one day, a couple of uh, fellows, and um, convinced me that I should at least go to their summer picnic and uh, and uh, get acquainted with some of them. And uh, as a result, then, uh, they took me in, and um, I spent four years in fraternity. Let me ask you a question uh, for the research. It's currently located on State Street on across from Lily Hall. Is that where it was originally? No. We were at 153 Sheet Street okay. uh, when I lived in it. Okay. And uh, Purdue uh, wanted our lots. We had three lots there. And uh, they wanted those lots because that's a part of uh, one of the grad houses I, or a parking area, one or the other. And uh, they uh, didn't want us to rebuild there uh, because we were in the uh, uh, what, a house of some sort, probably? Start, yes, it was yeah. an older house, yeah. and then we put an addition. We connected two houses together. The third lot, we, uh, the house we rented uh, as uh, income, uh, but those three lots then would be our future uh, new house. Uh, Purdue wanted those desperately, and so they took the association leadership and showed them all the opportunities that existed for uh, to build a, a new house and they chose that particular location and uh, it's been it is a good location yes, yes. Uh, whether we will be able to stay there or not is another issue is there a problem that they might want to take that or well the the master plan of the university shows that if uh, they will go I believe it's to Third Street. I'm not real certain on that, but I believe that's correct. All of that up next to State Street, they would like to eventually have. Okay, but it's a nice facility. I was there a couple of years ago for an event. I went with a friend, and it was really very nice. Mm -hmm. And it's a great, handy location. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, uh, what uh, your course of study was bag, and you lived in the fraternity, and um, any particular professors that uh, you had, that you recall. Um, no, in fact, most of them I, I, I felt very good about. Uh, Where were most of, were most of your classes held? In different places on campus or? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, I, re I remember uh, classes in, um, uh, this was before Lily Hall was completed. Oh, okay. And so a lot of our uh, uh, classes were actually in, in what's now Ag Administration and Fendler Hall. Uh, and... Um, then when Lily Hall was uh, completed, uh, then I think, if I recall right, uh, my soils course was probably the first course I took in in uh, what is now Lily Hall. Mm -hmm. And the uh, building uh, just west of Lily Hall, uh, where the uh, uh, maintenance department uses for their lawnmowers and what have you, that was the pavilion, and that's where all of our animal science uh, classes were held at, uh, related to animals, judging and various things in that, in that particular uh, building. Mm -hmm. and, and there was another barn just west of Lily Hall. It was still standing there uh, at the time. And so campus has changed dramatically. Oh, yes, I would say so, right. But And, and the old... Uh, Prefab buildings, FWA buildings, were those were undergraduate chemistry courses were taught there, and uh, so I, I recall those buildings yeah, as well. Yeah, kind of nice. All right. Yeah. What about student organizations? Any clubs, or did and did you go to football games or basketball? I was never a basketball fan. Uh, I attended very few basketball games, but I didn't miss a football game. I love football, so I always had season tickets for football, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Rarely, if ever, missed a game as a as a student. Um, did I belong to clubs? Yes, I belonged to several clubs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, being well, collegiate four H uh, would be one. The agronomy club would be another. Um, block and bridle would be another. Uh, I'm sure there's two, three others. Sure. And right. then some way or another, I was on the ag council, and uh, from one of those clubs 
So yes, I was involved. Get pretty in, active in, in this. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then after you got, then when you finished, did you you continued on at Purdue? No, oh. I taught vocational agriculture for two years. Oh, okay. Uh, a little school in Harrison Township in uh, Henry County uh, for two years, and I had started to take uh, coursework toward a, a master's degree because at the time, and I, that may still be the case, uh, you had a certain period of time uh, at which time you had to have a master's degree to maintain your teacher's license. And so I had started to take courses and I was up to that, almost to that maximum. In fact, the course I was enrolled in at the time would have put me to the maximum that if I took any additional courses I had to be admitted to graduate school for those to count. And so I sent an application to graduate school or asked for an application to graduate school and they also sent me an application for a teaching assistantship or graduate assistantship. And I asked them a question, well, what is this? What's it all about? And they said, well, uh, if you're selected, then it pays a certain amount toward your uh, degree, toward your education, and, uh, and then uh, takes care of your fees. And I said, hmm, doesn't sound like a bad idea. So I filled it out and sent it in and was selected. Cool. And so then I, I came uh, to work on a master's degree. I finished a master's degree, and since I had a lot of contacts over in the agronomy department, uh, I um, went to the agronomy department, uh, would have been probably in February or March, and asked if there was any chance that uh, they may have some uh, uh, part-time work in the field for May and June because teaching contracts started in on the 1st of July, BOAG teaching contracts. And um, so I received a phone call uh, a couple of weeks later uh, from uh, Jim Ulrichs. And uh, he did not have any part-time work, but he had a graduate teaching assistantship. And so I uh, then moved to the agronomy department as a graduate assistant and teaching uh, the laboratories and uh, undergraduate soils courses. So, that's what got me into agronomy. Very good. That, very, and so then, then you continued on for the PhD. Is that what you did? Well, that was the PhD. The PhD while yes. you were doing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Then, um, what uh, came next? Then you, you continued on after you finished your PhD. You see. Well, at that time, <coughs> uh, uh, Purdue. Uh, so you're in '64. Yeah, yes. Uh, in 1960. I'm not sure when it started, but 62, 63, when I was a graduate teaching assistant, assistant I, I knew that uh, professors in agronomy would travel to Vincennes University to teach undergraduate crops and soils course mm. in the spring semester each year. And uh, then when that, uh, about the time I finished my degree, um, the decision was made to hire somebody uh, to live there and teach those courses. And that's sort of a long story in itself, in that there was a, uh, a farmer in uh, uh, Illinois, Richard Dunseth was his name, and uh, he was a benefactor of uh, Vincennes University, uh, a farmer, so he was uh, very much interested in uh, Vincennes University getting involved in some things and uh, he wanted them to establish a, a soil testing laboratory uh, and um, so and he was willing to fund the establishment of that laboratory in terms of buying the equipment. Uh, so people from Vincennes University came to Purdue and met with the agronomy department and they suddenly realized that a soil test lab would, does not pay its own way. You have to subsidize it. And it's normally here, I think it was subsidized primarily through uh, the workforce, or at least part of the workforce. So I think uh, people from the agronomy department and a few people down there uh, convinced Mr. Dunseth that 
really what he should do is to invest that money into equipment to assist in the teaching of the agricultural courses. And that he did. And he liked the way they spent the money. And so then he says, okay, now you need to hire someone. I'll help you out the first few years. And I happen to be that person. So. So oh, very, that worked out very well then for you. Yeah. And w were you paid by Purdue or were you paid by Vincennes? No, I was a Purdue employee. Okay. Yes. On, say, on contract to Vincennes or something like that? Arrangement. Well, there was agreement between the okay. two institutions. Sure. Which, like a memorandum of understanding yeah, or something. And, and that agreement still exists. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know the details of today's sure. agreement, uh, but uh, at that time, uh, I think uh, when someone uh, traveled to Vincennes to teach, uh, I think they paid their travel expenses and lodging and those kinds of expenses. If they paid anything over and above that, I don't know. Sure. Now, did you live there at the time? Because you were there from 64 to 69. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I lived in, in Vincennes. Were yeah. you married at that time? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Did you meet your wife here? And, no, I met my wife in high school. In fact, that's another story. Um, she belonged to my mother's 4-H club. And so my mother wanted us to learn how to square dance, and so she matched us up by height. Her mother's so, mother mother taking on dancing with the children, whatever. So she, <laughs> she, she took us to square dance lessons, and, and that's how I... Interesting. That's uh, very nice. Got, a, got acquainted with her. <laughs> In, in my case, um, when I was very young, my mother thought it would be nice to take um, like ballet and tap and all that mm -hmm. because she knew the teacher that wasn't lived, didn't live too far, and so then they had recitals and, you know, all, this, all the whole nine yards. <laughs> but that's very nice. And then did she but come to Purdue too? No. Oh. Mm -mm. She, she uh, attended uh, Lockyer's Business College in Evansville. Okay. Uh, but uh, after we were married... Uh, she never did work. She was a stay-at-home mother. Okay. And, um, uh, but, uh, yeah, we, uh, we lived at Vincennes, uh, for, uh, what, Almost five, uh, five, years. five and, five and a half years, I believe uh -huh. it was. Did you come back to Purdue during that time to take up uh, any activities that they'd have here, or? Uh, I, I traveled every Monday morning, every other Monday morning, I came to Purdue for staff meetings okay. and uh, uh, agronomy department staff meetings. In the summertime, it was once a month. Okay. And uh, that's the way I had kept my contacts. And um, during the time I was there, uh, the, the program grew significantly. Um, I did not have many students when I first started there. and. Uh, then with time, uh, I kept getting a few more, and by the time I left, it was a very large group. Good. And um, I think it was the second year that I was there, I realized that the counseling of the ag students was, well, let's say it left a little bit to be desired. Uh, they were being counseled into courses that would not transfer on a transfer program, and so I thought that was bad. And so I asked if uh, it was possible for me to do the counseling of the uh, transfer, those students in the transfer program. And they discussed it a while, and they said, yes, they'd try it. Well, it, it, it worked okay. And so uh, uh, then I, I had all the uh, transfer students. And when I left, I think I had about 190-some students total uh, and we also set it up so that some of those students could uh, uh, stay at home, live at home, and really take equivalent of five semesters rather than the normal four semesters because there were other, uh, what I would call non-tech electives that they could take uh, that would transfer, uh, that were not on the original uh, program. And some of those that I can think of were something like uh, uh, there, there was an anatomy course uh, that would transfer. There was uh, at least one or two economics courses that would transfer. Um, th those kinds of courses. 
that they could take over and above the normal two-year program, which would pick up one semester for them. So they would go to Vincennes University three years, and then they would attend Purdue for three semesters to get a degree from Purdue University. Did quite a few of them come to Purdue over your time there? Yes, during the time I was there, I would say that uh, uh, I'm guessing, it's only a guess, as I, my yeah. memory, it, maybe 85 to 90 percent of those that completed the program uh, would transfer uh, to most of them to Purdue, a few to, I think it was Western Illinois, or Western Kentucky, rather, Western Kentucky, and then uh, Southern Illinois. Those were the three schools that they would transfer to. Um, but, uh, and again, some of the students that I had it were Illinois residents because uh, Vincennes University is a community college and received some uh, tax support from, I think it was five counties in Illinois. And uh, in fact, during the time I was worked extension as a part of this position, I had uh, approval to travel into those five counties on call if the local extension agent uh, wanted me to come and visit a farm, then I could go because that was a, an agreement with the, with the Illinois Extension Service. And that was because of the, of the tax funding of those five counties to Vincent University. Oh, that, was good. that was good experience for you too as well. Good contact oh, yes. too. It was nice. Mm -hmm. Were there any other Purdue people at the time you were there that were uh, in, uh, teaching there at the same time? Well, not living there, no. but uh, each, each year there would be someone from horticulture, oh, okay. uh, a faculty member from animal science, and one from uh, ag economics uh, that would uh, travel to Vincennes uh, uh, to teach. Uh, I don't remember exactly how those were arranged, uh, I'm thinking it was uh, ag economics and horticulture and then animal science and, and agronomy were, were then in the spring semester. Okay, okay. So. Yeah, but you were there for, any, uh, for 10 months? Yeah, I was there uh, full-time. Full I lived time. there full-time. Uh -huh. And, and um, the spring semester was 100% teaching because if you look at the contact hours, uh, I had uh, seeming like I had 21 contact hours in three days. So, which meant that, uh, you know, in fact, there was one day I didn't even have a lunch hour the last year I was there. And then during the time when I had to do my counseling, that was in the other two days of the week. So it was essentially a full-time job. Because on Tuesday I had to set up all the equipment for my labs uh, for the for the uh, last three days of the week. And uh, then the balance of the year, then I worked as an extension specialist in 18 counties in, uh, in southwestern Indiana. That's quite a schedule. That's a good, good, good introduction to the field, to your career. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm going to thinking, I'm going to ask, because it's room is coming at three, and what I'm going to ask you, maybe... Uh, this might be a time when we could break because then we can move into the agronomy and I can are you going to be gone for the winter? Or are you oh no. Be, okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm 